everyone, a very warm welcome back to MechTech. Uh, we are out on the driveway today and we're working on this, which is a friend of mine's Mark II Audi TT this time. Now he's had a bit of an issue with this, a uh, bit of a backstory on this, he's had a bit of an issue with it uh, as far as it is uneven idle and missing a little bit and just generally not running particularly well. Um, there's a few things that have been looked at on it and it did come up with a misfire code on uh, the when you plug it in on the machine. Now I've had a look at it and I've actually took the PCV valve, which is a positive crank ventilation valve apart. I've cleaned the whole thing out and I have um, looked inside it. It's got like a rubber diaphragm inside it. Uh, and it was all clagged up inside and the diaphragm is starting to deteriorate inside. Now, since I've cleaned it all out, I've been driving it around for a couple of days and it hasn't missed a beat since. But because that diaphragm is deteriorating, we are gonna change the PCV valve on it today. We're also going to put a new rocker cup gasket on it as well. Um, we do need to plug it in again though because the light has come back on since I've been driving it. Although it hasn't shown any signs of problems as far as driving, just want to obviously want to see what that code is throwing up um, on the on the machine. So I want to do that first. Get it, get you inside the car with me. Get it plugged in. See what the light says, and then obviously go from there. I'm changing the PCB valve and the rocker gasket, and obviously then we'll investigate any further if we need to. So without further ado, let's carry on. Radio. Uh, I've not worked on one of these before, so this is new to me as well. I just thought I'd show you if any of you do need to plug your Mark II Addy TT in, the port for it is up under here in the corner. There's a little plug, so we'll get the laptop plugged into that. So that's the driver's side, uh, well, right hand side of the footwell, the driver's side. We'll get that plugged in and uh, see if we can get into communication with it and go from there. Right here, I've got my little uh, scan tool plugged in here. I have got a laptop with VAGCOM on it, but it's too old for this car. So I've looked at my little scan tool and it's come up with this camshaft position actuator circuit open bank one. So I'm gonna have to look into that and see what that code is, but it is kind of good news in a way because it means it's nothing to do with the misfire that it had before, because before it was coming up with a misfire. Um, so hopefully that might just be a glitch or a plug that I've touched when I've taken the PCV valve in and out. So we're gonna get under the bonnet now. We'll change the PCV valve and the rocker gasket. We'll have a look around for make sure I've not lost any plugs or put not put any plugs in somewhere along the line and go from there. Let's crack on. Right, looks like it's an error on my part or someone's part, I'm not sure which. Plug was unplugged. That literally just plugs in now and that should fix our problem with the uh, error code. So that is absolutely great news. So this is the PCV valve. It runs underneath here and across here. And inside here is a rubber diaphragm. Now, you're not technically supposed to take this cover off, but I popped the cover off to have a look at it to see what sort of condition it was in. As I said, it's deteriorating right around the edge of it. It's all cracking, um, which will obviously affect its performance, which is why we're changing it for a new one. Now you can see we've got a little bit of weepage around the uh, rocker cover as well. So we're gonna have to take that off um, and obviously change that over as well hopefully i'm not sure what i've got to take off and how much but we need to uh delve in and see what we can do let's carry on Radio, as you'll have seen from that bit of time lapse there, that is the PCV valve off. Fairly straightforward job. I've popped the coils out, which obviously just pop on top of the plugs. They come out really easy. Uh, undone the wiring to obviously allow me access. Now, you haven't got to take this PCV valve off to change the rocker cover gasket, but I figured as we're changing it anyway, I will take this off first, which then allows me better access to all the bolts around the rocker cover gasket. And obviously then we can change that at the same time. So I'm gonna carry on 
I've got these Torx bolts all over it, which I'm gonna undo. Cut the plugs, and um, we should be, hopefully somewhere near, getting that free with any luck. It's leaking all over it by the looks of it, so it's definitely the right thing to do. Let me just, uh, sh I'll show you. I'll grab the camera and show you what I mean. We've got seepage all along the front here, as you can see. And also we've got quite a lot of seepage. If you look under the back there, can't see it all that well, but there's quite a lot of seepage down the back there as well. So definitely the right thing to do to change it. Obviously it is 12 years old now, or they're on, near on 12 years old, so worth changing. So I'm gonna crack on, get all these bolts undone, and I'll come back to you when I've got the rocker cover off. Right, that was an absolute faff, but we're there. It's off, as you can see. Now, I've not necessarily done this the right way, as far as what you're supposed to take off and what you're not supposed to take off, but I've done the best I can. But in doing, obviously taking this off, I actually found that the new gasket is not required. All it uses is sealant. That's probably why it started leaking in the first place. As you can see, it's got like a groove cut into the head machine into the head you can just run a bead of sealer right around it now you can see there are various bits where the sealer is missing or too low so that's obviously why it was leaking this is the back you can see where the oil was all getting through so basically what i've got to do now is just clean this up and reseal it this gasket actually comes with some sealer luckily enough so um I'm gonna have a look at this compared to the stuff that I use, because if the stuff that I use is better, I'll use the stuff I've got, so I know it will seal right. But I knew, I knew it was difficult getting it off, now I know why. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna uh, get all this cleaned up, and I'll come back to you. Radio, as you can see there now, I've spent a good bit of time, probably a good half an hour cleaning all that up on there. You can see all the surfaces are all nice and clean now. I used a mixture of a blade, um, some brake cleaner, and a scotch pad and some 600 fine wet and dry to get all that clean and nice. Same with the rocker cover there. Now this actually doubles up as a cam cover, so you, a cam runner, so you've got to make sure that it's mega clean. Um, so that is all nice and clean and lovely scabbly. So now I've got that groove cleaned out all the way around the edge. You can see here, I'm gonna run the bead of sealer right the way around it and then it should be good to go back on. Obviously these do in this little groove here and in the grooves around the plug holes as well. So obviously seal those up. Let's carry on.
right, you would have seen that bit of time lapse there. Obviously, me tightening all this back down again. Now, I hadn't, um, when I did that bit of time lapse, I wasn't talking them down or anything. I was just putting the bolts in so they were doing all in there. And I've actually gone through the correct tightening procedure now, which is shown online. Um, you're supposed to start on this row here, then this row, then this row, then this row, then this row, and then the last two on the end here. And you have to do those to eight newton meters and then an extra 90 degrees once you've done them all once you go around them all again do an extra 90 degrees so that's now all done talked up you can see there's a nice little bead of sealer just just poking out the side slightly which is fine it means it's nice and sealed hopefully we've got the same down the middle of the plug holes there i haven't really looked but it looks like there is not too much so that's good so that is all bolted down now this cam covers back on the cam sensor is that I forgot to plug in earlier is back in. I'm missing a bolt which has fallen down on the under tray, so I've got to dig that out. Um, so yeah, we are progressing well. Um, I'm just going to carry on putting bits back until we uh, get to a stage where there's no more bits left. <laughs> Let's carry on. Right, let's go for a first start, see what we get. Oh, it's tired, that's a good start. That's alright. That's very good. good. Near up. It's totally cold from where I've been. Working on it for so long, it's even warm now. Yeah. Seems okay to me. Lovely jubbly.
Right, there we go. Just a little mini detail on this. I think that's come out pretty nice. Got a shine on that. So it's had a, a wash clay mitt and a coat of the ceramic uh, turtle wax, graphene ceramic wax. Look at that, a shine on that. I'm quite chuffed for that. Unfortunately, the rear face was a little bit stained from the exhaust uh, sort of uh, fumes or whatever coming out of it. But other than that, it looks like nuts. I'd have one. <laughs> I want this car. But I want a manual one. So you never know, in the near future, I might end up with a uh, Mark II GT. <laughs> there we go. I think that should uh, finish this off nicely. Lovely jubbly. Right then, that is going to be it for this episode on MechTech. I've done another different process, another different car, and it's made me want one of these now as well. So I might end up with a Mark 1 TT and a Mark 2 TT in the future, you never know. Um, remember, I have got um, Instagram, mech underscore tech, 1985, and I have Facebook, mech dash tech, for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. Um, and all that is left to say is if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures, I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.